Name a more toxic relationship in the anime industry. Animators getting underpaid, overworked, and even actually dying at their desk because they have to work so hard just to be able to live. That is something that has come up way too often over the decades. It is something that will probably continue to happen for a very long time, which is the harsh reality of the situation. And you can look it up yourself. There's been countless articles of just animators getting completely underpaid, overworked, and as I already said, dying at their desk. And there's animators that went on record to say that their job feels like legitimate sweatshop. And so, what I'm talking about today is this studio called Tonari Animation that made this post about a few days ago, which has garnered quite a lot of attention, and a lot of people have kind of, you know, added me to tell me about this and wanted me to kind of talk about it. And so I wanted to kind of weigh in and discuss this uh, drama, this controversy that is going on, because at first glance, if you don't know anything about, like, the conversion rate of the pay to just, like, everything going on here, at first glance, with no knowledge, it seems like, it's good, but when you start diving into it a little bit deeper, things start to show cracks, things start to show that there is a lot more sinister and nefarious things at play, that this company clearly doesn't have the best interest of the animators at hand. So let's, let's get into that. So, basically, this post was made talking about the requirements of being hired for production assistance and stuff to work on anime, and, you know, this is what you need. Basically, what you need to have on your resume. You need to have skills and requirements of good organization and file management. Sounds reasonable enough. Google Sheet experience, once again, sounds very reasonable enough. Japanese, into or higher, FYI, if you don't know what this is, this is what it is. It's basically like a language class for Japan. It's to pass an exam to say that you can basically understand basic Japanese and be able to have proper conversations and topics within the language. I think that is perfectly fair if you are wanting to work on anime in Japan. That is completely fair. I see that is completely fine to need this type of knowledge. But uh, going back into the requirements, willingness to relocate to Japan or live in Japan. This one right here is a pretty big detail because it basically says that you need to completely move from whatever country you're in to go to Japan to work at the business location. Most likely it's set up in Tokyo, Japan because that's where basically all the big you know, animators and animation companies are at or located. So you would need to locate yourself to basically the biggest city in Japan or at least one of the biggest cities like even if it's not you know Tokyo it could be something else but they're gonna be a big city but uh so you need to be able to relocate and then you need to have passion for anime which is nice a little tacked on thing because I mean anyone that wants to be an animator probably has passion for animation and art and full-time availability which basically means you're always on the clock you have you know you're gonna be a full-time employee and no matter what time it is, you should be ready to work. That's what it implies. And then you look at the starting pay, it says 150,000 to 250,000 yen per month. Once again, anyone that doesn't know the conversion rate of Japanese yen, this seems like a quite a massive number. But let's look at the conversion rate. This on screen right here is what two or not 200, 150,000 yen is to USD. $1,018. Now, let's be fair, let's do the high end that the individual said, 250000 If we do that, it winds up to almost $1,700, okay? And that right there is anyone looking at this for that type of pay. If we're looking at, like, the job listing, this is what you'd be starting at, and that'd be the max pay. That pay is definitely not enough to live in Japan. And if you don't believe me, let's look it up. Price of rent in Japan. This right here is the average capital range of a single room apartment in, sh uh, in shared housing for uh, 20,000 Japanese yen to 150,000 Japanese yen for a private apartment. The average amount for a two bedroom unit is little over 200,000 Japanese yen, so it equals up to 1,800 a month. Now, Let's look into this a little bit. Basically, if you dive into it a little bit more, most of the time people that want to go on the cheaper route to be able to save money, you're going to need to get a 15 square meter 
apartment. And this is how big a 15 square meter apartment is in Japan. And this is like probably one of the cheapest things you can get to be able to even live on a salary like that. There's no space to really say it's your own. And this really kind of puts in perspective a lot of the apartments and stuff that you see in anime when, you know, a character's sitting alone in a room or whatever, why they're so small. It's because they can barely cost or pay rent probably because of just how low pay actually is. But let's get back onto the topic. So, this company makes this posting, and it's very clear where the controversy is coming from. People are obviously saying, yo, this is, this is kind of a slap to the face, to years of dedication to the craft of being an animator, to working on anime, or wanting to work on anime, learning Japanese for potentially months to years, you know, and having a basic understanding of it. There's a lot you've got to invest, so to speak, to even be able to go into the door of working on anime. And for this company to basically outright say you're only worth, you know, basically less than $1,700 a month is pretty ridiculous because once again the amount of time and effort to put into being an animator is astronomically high it is not something you just do in a day and you learn in a day it takes years of dedication and craft to be able to do i mean there's obviously outliners probably talented people but most of the time it's going to take a long time to really get to that level of being able to actually be a really good animator and so when you see this type of stuff it's just like wow but then if you dive in a little bit deeper I gotta bring this up again. The average monthly income of animators that work in Japanese companies is already pretty low. Now, to be fair, this was from 2022. I mean, it's not that long ago, almost a year old, but it still basically highlights the fact that this isn't just a Tunari animation company issue. This is just a sweeping wide issue with animators in general, which kind of gets into the big issue that's been going on for years now that I've talked about, to where animators are hard to come by nowadays in Japan. Like, it's very clear there is a lot of anime uh, animator shortages in Japan. I mean, we nowadays, just from this year alone, we have seen astronomically high numbers of anime getting delayed, like, indefinitely until multiple seasons later when it starts to air. It, you could say whatever you want. That was not something that happened continuously years ago. I mean, yeah, there was always production issues. There always has been production issues, which shows. But I have never seen a year of anime that has had so many delays to the point to where, like, a show airs first three episodes, and then it delays the next episode, it comes out, delays the next episode, the next episode comes out, delays it two more weeks, and then it's pushed back two next seasons. It, this has happened multiple times. And so, it is not something that is obviously getting better. It's clear that as time goes on, it's become increasingly, increasingly more real that animators or people that want to be animators don't want to probably be animators anymore because they're, they, they just, they can't live. They, they literally can't live on that pain because of just how little it actually is. And so the controversy that is around this, I do think is legitimately important, but it's not just Tonari that's doing it. There's so many other companies doing the exact same thing. Does it make it right? No, it doesn't. It, it definitely doesn't. But uh, let's talk about it a little bit more in depth. So let's look at this pay, okay? So obviously, this is the high margin of what the starting pay is. What is the minimum wage in Japan? The minimum wage in Japan is this. So Japan apparently increased its minimum wage and all that back in 2022. And this was what it was at. So basically, this is what the minimum wage, which was 1,042 USD a month. Which, when you look at the entry-level pay... You know, it seems like, um, here, I'll show it right here, that it's actually lower than the minimum wage right here. It is, it's lower. Now, I don't know fully about Japanese law and how that works. I'm not going to pretend I do. I'm not going to get into that one because I don't know much about it. And I'm a man enough to admit if I don't know something, I don't have a business to really talk about that too much because I'm not going to try to spread misinformation on that topic. But I will say that, um... Even if, you know, there is some loophole or whatever with it, the point of the matter is just looking at a quick Google search, the minimum wage is pretty freaking low. And the job offering that is being listed for Tonari is pretty much borderline minimum wage, which is like, oh, so you're telling me, um, you know, a person that dedicates years of dedication and work to a craft, you know, 
is not getting paid that much. I think if you dedicate four or five years, hell, even a year or two on something to really try to dive in and you spend a lot of money, etc., and a lot of knowledge and resources to do something, you should get a reward for that. You should get paid, etc. And the fact that they're starting off at basically bottom of the barrel minimum wage is pretty... That, that's disheartening. Makes a lot of sense why a lot of animators just don't want to be animators anymore. Why people just don't want to be animators anymore. It's sad to see. This is legitimately a sad thing. But um, we also got to look at the CEO. So this is the CEO of the company, which started to talk about, you know, um, the whole controversy. He, he is, once again, as clarification, this is the CEO of Tonari, okay? This, this company right here. And he basically outlines and says, I'm really glad that this post has ignited more conversation about pain anime and the controversy has gotten the tweet over 800,000 views. The people who don't understand the anime industry and trashed their job postings inadvertently brought it to attention of many who are really excited about the possibility of starting a production career in anime at Tonari Animation. People don't understand that anime is enjoyed by more than the US and Western Europe, and the prospect might be interesting in countries that don't operate on USD or Euro. For some people, that pay is actually very reasonable for an entry-level position based on their home currency. Regardless, anime pay is low, not unlivable, and small studios aren't in a position to do anything about it, neither are Twitter mobs. If this post contributes to the awareness of the pay issue, then great. On a note, I know many people working in anime who have families and homes. It's possible to have a career in anime that pays well and contributes to good health. You just have to put in the work and stick around. Okay, at first, it seemed like it was kind of okay. But then when he gets into this, basically, he implies, oh, because it's a thing that's in Japan, and, you know, I'm going to point this out, that the pay in Japan is already astronomically low for animators and stuff and entry-level employees... It's, um, it's okay to, uh, do stuff like this. It's okay to pay them low, bottom of the barrel, because every other company does it. And I like how there is a moral high ground trying to be played here, where it's like, oh, you know, on a note, people working in MMA have families and stuff, you know, you just gotta work hard and stick around. It's like, bro, who's gonna stick around when you're paying a minimum wage? But also, talking about how, you know... Like, it, you, they're not in a position to do anything about it, neither are Twitter mobs. But, like, okay, I understand you're not in a position, like, the company is not in a position to change, le uh, like, laws and govern Japan or whatever. But it's like, it doesn't mean you have to bow down and do the exact same thing all these other companies are, okay? I know there's outliners and reasons why sometimes this happens. I'm not going to get into the intricacies of that, but the point of the matter is, is that for this CEO to go out of their way and basically say, yes, the pay is bad and it needs to have awareness to it, but then contribute to the very problem itself by paying them low wages is pretty just... The, the, oh, I, I don't even think I need to say. I, I think it speaks for itself on just the what's being said here by the CEO. I mean, obviously, maybe in a certain way they are heated and they said this out of anger. I understand that. I've done things like that as well. I completely feel you on that moment. But the way this is, it just it comes off as like, oh, we're going to pay them low salary because, you know, we can get away with it. Everybody else is doing it. Why don't we? And, I mean, companies are going to do that. Fair. That they're gonna do that. If they can get away with it, they're gonna do it. That's just that's how it is. Look at the gaming industry. That also speaks for itself. So I'm just saying that when you see this right here taking place, it's just like crazy because it's like, once again, this isn't just this CEO. It isn't just Tonari that is doing this. It is pretty much the the studios, main studios all in Japan that contribute to this problem. It is good to see more attention to this and people talking about it. It's also ironic that uh, Noshobako is the picture here being used, despite uh, what is going on with all this posting. But uh, yeah, um, pretty wild. I wanted to talk about this because it's just like, I can't believe, you know, uh, this just outline or I guess just this very honest approach of just wanting to underpay people. Pretty interesting, not gonna lie. Um... Also, this is what they've worked on for anyone that wants to know what Tonari has worked on. You know, they've helped with key animation for Boruto, Blue Lock, and all that type of stuff. You know, Black Clover. This is kind of their uh, project listing. You know, for you can see here, you can pause the video and look. So they've had a few projects they've worked on over the years. But, uh, yeah. 
But I'll leave it at that. I just, I want to talk about the subject because I saw many people adding me at it, wanted me to chat about it, and I saw it, and I was just like, wow. I wanted to shed some light on it. But uh, if I'm wrong about anything or if there needs to be more clarification, do let me know in the comments below. I'll gladly hear you out. But uh, from everything I can look up, it's pretty crazy. Legitimately crazy just to see all these different things. But okay, be safe. Stay healthy, everyone. I love you. Chibi out.